Hello everyone, it's LA and this is March 15th. Uh, this is the weekly review here at TA Today uh, where we take a look at what happened uh, last week and uh, you know what it tells us about the coming weeks. Um, if we look at last week, you know, we were kind of thinking coming in that we'd see some sort of a down, downside pressure. We got that pretty much across the board, although the Russell really uh, outperformed uh, again. And, you know, I'm beginning to wonder if it really is rotation here or not, and, and we'll probably know that pretty soon. Last year, Russell underperformed the entire year. Now it's starting to outperform, and so that's definitely something for us to watch. It was up last week where I re well, everything else uh, was down. So, you know, from a market perspective, you know, the thing to, to notice here is that, you know, if, if, you're, if you're in the listed issues, right, you're, you're basically down on the year. If you're in the NASDAQ or the Russell, you're up. Outside of that, you know, it's been a mixed year and it's been a mixed market, and I suspect it's going to be that way most of this year. I think we're going to have a very choppy, up and down type market. It's just the way it's setting up. If you look back, you've had three big years up. You know, the, the setup here is for a choppy market. And, uh, you know, it's just something to, to keep in the back of your mind. And what it tells me is that we have to be even more diligent about trying to take profits uh, when they're in front of us um, much more than we have in the past. Okay, so let's uh, let's kind of review where we're at here on the technicals and the fundamentals. You know, the big thing last week was the surging dollar, and now this potential for a breakdown in oil. So if we take a look at this dollar, you can see here, um, I've got it on a weekly view. You can see the huge, you know, spike up. First, there was the the ABCD structure here, you know, that took this thing up and beyond where it was heading. Right, so we got a we got a stretch there that was bigger uh, than what one would expect, and then now we've got this one in place, right? That takes it up to about 27 and a half, and we're at 26 and a half. So another buck, another buck on this is, you know, another four percent or so. Um, so, you know, this dollar surge doesn't look like it's done. We've got a big expansion in volume again. That may be telling us something. Maybe it's not. But we definitely have a push going on, and you can see it here on the daily, where you've gone over the highs, you know, volume's not expanding here in terms of a surge expansion finale. So it just looks to me like this dollar is going to try and continue higher. The, the converse, or not so much the converse, but the result of this is that if you look at oil and commodities in general, they're just getting smoked. And oil is coming back down to test these lows, and we, we kind of knew it would at some point, and here it comes again. You know, when you get this kind of a sell-off, you, you know, where you, where you drop, you know, 30, 40 percent, you're not going to get a huge bounce in terms of, of that drop without some sort of a basing retesting, and that's what this is doing. So oil itself, if this starts to break out these lows, Right, that's going to be viewed as another leg down, and I've got it here on a weekly. So if I take oil and say, okay, where's the ABCD structure here? You know, it's ridiculous, right, in terms of where this thing would go. Now, you know, clearly this thing won't go that far. I mean, a break here is not going to extend, um, you know, another 20 bucks because it can't. Now, if we do it on a um, you know, projected, you know, this is where I like to use, instead of arithmetic ABCD structures, I like to use percentages. So if we do that, and so if we, if we step over here and we use, you know, this top, bottom, that, down, right, and do the calculations, uh, I've thrown them into my spreadsheet here, and you can see the projection here is that, the, the key here is it's about 44% down. So in other words, oil can get cut in half again. Now, it's hard to fathom that. I don't know that that's real. But West Texas Intermediate is trading at about, I think, 45. So it could go to 27. Um, you know, that could be real. I don't know. All I know is what the projections show. And I know that if this market starts to take off, 
to the downside and break and we get that kind of an extension that's going to have a huge effect so just another one of those things out there that says hey you know it's a, it's a weird world we're in and we may see some sort of a plunge in all and it's and it's happening across all the commodities i mean it doesn't matter uh, what you look at of course oil is influencing all of these but if i pop up the continuous commodity index you can see this thing just continuing to spike to the downside it's already broken it continues to break you know if i bring over a monthly on this thing this thing's in uncharted territory now on the monthly uh, it's broken all the swing point lows so commodities in general are in trouble and a large part of it uh, is this this strange world where the central bankers are doing what they're doing and where you would think you would see inflation you know from a dollar denominated point of view things are being depressed lower and lower and you know what that's telling you I mean if you stop and think about it what it's telling you is that we're importing deflation into this country I mean by our currency being higher that deflation that's elsewhere is coming back to us now that's good I guess from a consumer standpoint but this sort of large huge distortions should be and are disruptive to the various markets including the equity markets so that to me is the biggest thing that happened last week that surging dollar the plunge you hear in these others technically you know we've got some negatives out here Thursday's bounce was test again on Friday on roughly equal or slightly greater volume so if I look at uh, the the various indexes and we can just start here with the S&P 500 you know we had a huge bounce off this first move down that big bounce 34.058 we come back with 34.985 and if you look across all of these they all did the same thing they either had as much or slightly more volume so that bounce to me can get tested again and if you look at what's happening this week the Federal Reserve is doing its thing on Wednesday they start the deliberations on Tuesday and if we kind of fast forward ahead here in terms of the economics you know you got Bank of Japan on Monday you've got some numbers here you've got a little bit of news but not much here on Tuesday and then it's really the Fed and so I don't see a lot unless there's a huge upside surprise here or downside surprise in terms of industrial production or something I don't see there being a lot of flex so we're still kind of in this news vacuum in front of the Fed that means that we can continue to drift so my expectation here as a result of that is that that low that we saw on Friday and on Thursday is more than likely going to get tested again it's probably not done now if you project out and you say to yourself okay where could things go you know what could happen here it's it's not hard to imagine this or even maybe a little higher but it's not hard to imagine this as potentially another ABCD structure to the downside it's going to take us back to the bottom of that range remember we had a range out here before and that range was from here to here and then the big one was up here that range is still in effect I mean it hasn't gone away and so we're back into it and the fact that we're back into it says that we could test lower I mean it, there, we're, we're in this big range you know, let me draw it out this way right we're still in this big range and we're now inside that little range that we had before and that test right now is at that level if we can't get back above this this week I would expect us to do an ABCD structure to downside and and you know if that bounce comes from here or I mean if that that push comes from here it's going to take us right down into these lows so I think there's still quite a bit of danger here for a continued sell-off now if we look at it from a positive perspective that's kind of a negative perspective but if we go back over and look at it from a positive perspective you know we're coming back into areas that really should give us a bounce for example on the NDX we're coming back into this level and so far it's held now what's odd about this is that it was more than six bars which typically says that you know not only are you going to get a bounce you're, you're probably going to get it at the top of this area not at the bottom right 
And so this one has done a full one. It's all the way to the bottom instead of bouncing from the top. Now it's kind of a narrow one, you know, in terms of size. So I, you know, I guess it's possible, but it's just kind of odd that it's done it this way. I would have expected that bounce right off that, you know, top portion, which it started to do on Thursday, but then Friday it couldn't follow through. So that part of it looks negative. Uh, the the positive is that it's holding. The other positive, if we want to do the positive sides here, is if we look at the NASDAQ itself, you know, the NASDAQ is coming back into its retest regen zone if it wants to. That also would be quote unquote a positive. The negative part of that, and you can see I'm very mixed here, the negative part of that is, hey, the NDX would break if we got back here. So that's a negative. And then the other positive, the only one that's really positive is the Russell. And the Russell has behaved very nicely. Problem is, is the Russell tested lower on higher volume on Friday. So the Russell probably can come back down and test again. Now, the Russell is the one, if I had anything to look at to tell me, hey, this thing's going higher, it would be here. Because this one had been range bound over a year. And matter of fact, if I pull over the monthly chart, you know, we can see that range bound market all the way back to what is this back here? It was September, November last year, or oh, well, two years ago, right? That range bound is a year and a half now in the making. And so that could offer a very large push if it gets going. And, and what I mean by that is if I look at this on a monthly basis and say, okay, where could this thing go? Let me make sure I do this right. Let's get the numbers because I didn't do it ahead of time. And so it would be from here up, right? So we'd actually have the ABCD structure from here higher to there, back down to here and back up. And so you could see it would be a fairly good push if this thing does move on this time frame. The other thing we haven't talked about in a long time is, you know, we're still very extremely extended on the long-term time frame. The long-term time frame is going to get reset at some point. I know the central bankers have prolonged this longer than you or I could ever have imagined, uh, but at some point we will get a reset, and that is going to be you know, a larger move when it finally comes. If I look at this one, for example, let's just use the Russell, this is going to print a swing point low before that much longer. One, two, three, four. We're on the fifth month now. I don't think we're going to get down there and break it by the time of the next month. So that's going to print a swing point low. That would be a break. That price point's 1040. So in other words, we could go down, still hold above 1,000, and break on the long-term time frames. And so, you know, you can kind of see that it potentially can set up again, and at some point it will. Uh, we're just not there right now. This is the most positive sector, in my opinion, at this point of view. Uh, going over these negatives, we talked about the, that's not typical on the NDX, the dollar surging. Corporate debt's being shown. This is something else that I noticed as I was preparing. And that is, if I look at, like, say, the junk bonds, for example, right? You had this big push up after the October scare, right? Goes all the way up here. This looks pretty positive here on this time frame. If I flip it to a weekly, it's a different story. What have you done on the weekly? Well, you've just come up to do the retest regen, right, into this area. And right now, it's trying to regenerate lower. Now, the key is going to be right here, that support zone you see, and we're almost at it. So this is something we should be watching. Because if it does trade back down into these areas, then it's going to try to go all the way back to the lows. And that would say, hey, there's something wrong with the debt structure, especially on the junk bonds, right? But it's not just the junk bonds. And that's why I took note of it today. If I go to like high quality corporate bonds, Again, doesn't look too bad on the daily, but you know, not great. On, on, the, on the daily, it actually looks worse than you do on the junk side. Keeps making lower lows, keeps pushing, and then if I push this one to the daily, excuse me, the weekly, that big spike up, remember this is that same spike we've seen everywhere. We're underneath it on the corporate bonds, and we pushed under it with volume. This looks to go lower, folks, and if you look at this, you've got all these swing point lows lined up down here. So I'm, I'm suspecting this is going to work back into this zone and then it's going to, you know, it's going to be set up for a test on this time frame. 
And that time frame, like we were just talking about with respect to the, um, you know, the long-term time frame breaking on the Russell or, or the various indexes, that's how they're going to set up. And you can see this one, 117.26 on the corporate, which is this low. So if you break here, you're breaking across multiple time frames, and we're talking about the long-term time frame on the debt structure. So in other words, the price of debt is coming down, right, as, 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 as seen here in this bond ETF for corporate debt. People are unwilling to pay up anymore to buy this debt. I don't know that that's a good thing because that's saying that people are not so much nervous, but they don't believe the risk is worth the reward anymore in terms of what the rates are paid out here. And so to me, that's, that's a negative and something to watch. So that was something else. Uh, technical positives. I, I think that the most positive thing is that most sectors are holding above their first or their second um, levels, uh, bullish retest regens. And so if I just quickly pop over and, and look at a couple of those, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll start with like the uh, financials because I think that's probably one of the, the key areas to watch. And so now financials, they had gotten above this swing point high. They couldn't hold it. Uh, that was this bar right here. But then they came back down into this one, right, to test it, and they held and bounced right back out. And so that's a, that's a good example of what's happening. If I go elsewhere, like the, the material sector got a nice big push up. This one's pushing back towards these highs, hasn't quite got to it. Um, but if we look at it, I think on the weekly it has. So it's trading in there, testing, holding. Um, and I could go right across the line here. They're almost, almost all of them are doing the same sort of things. I'll look at a couple of the strongest ones. XLY didn't even come back into it. XLV, I don't know if it made it back. Yeah, it did. Got into it, bounced back out. And so most of these sectors are holding either their top level, most of them are the top, or, or a few of them are a little bit deeper, but they're holding. And that's a positive. It's not a negative. Uh, that's a good thing. The other thing is that the European Japanese stock markets, they just continue to roar. Germany, CACs, you know, the French market, new highs. Uh, the, the Japanese market just broke out to new highs. And it's happening where? Well, it's happening where there's strong currency devaluations, right? This QE has an effect. The effect is to push that deflation somewhere else to make those markets, quote unquote, more competitive. And there's huge speculation in the equities because, because the ideal is that equities will go higher if your currency goes lower. It's just the way it works, right? And so that is, you know, that is what's happening. They're huge runs. That's a positive overall to the world, but you know, less and less, I think it affects us. Uh, so, you know, positive overall to the world. In other words, I don't see us crashing as a result of it, but at the same time, I don't think the bleed over is nearly as big as people think it is. It's good for those markets and that's about it. Fundamentally, the positive ECB, of course, a debt issuance is less than the artificial demand. So in a way, you know, you've got these central bankers buying up debt, especially in Europe, and they're, they're like most of the market, and they're just taking it off the market. And that's pushing rates lower, which means people have to take that money and put it somewhere else. And of course, they're putting it into equities, they're putting it into other markets uh, where, they can't, where they can get a better return. That's fundamentally a positive as long as they do it. I think the negatives here is the Fed's going to remove that patient language. And I don't frankly know how well that's priced in. I think the expectation is that will happen and that's probably pretty well priced in. But what does that tell you? It tells you that rates can go up at any time. I don't know that they will. Matter of fact, I think it's going to be hard to raise rates here in the States, but at the same time, I think the market's going to be constantly worried about it, and that's going to make this market choppy. It's not going to allow it to just keep climbing because the expectation is those rates are going to go up. Uh, and until that expectation changes or that uncertainty gets priced out, um, then that's going to be a negative. 
the, the dollar still we already talked about. And then the other thing is, as that dollar keeps going up, and I talked about this six months ago, that it would probably affect us in the first quarter. Um, I think I brought it up as early as late last summer, that it would probably not hurt us in the fall, but it probably would in the spring, uh, you know, in the winter, when we had first quarter earnings. And that is, is the dollar surges, that puts more pressure on companies in terms of their, you know, accounting uh, to find some extra revenue from somewhere. And usually in the accounting books, you know, there's enough fudge factor that you can cover for a quarter or two if, if the decline isn't lar large enough. But after that, you've pretty much used up your, your extra, you know, slop that's out there. And, and then at that point, you can't cover it anymore. And that's what happened in the first quarter. I think it's going to be even more apparent in this next round of earnings that come out in, starting in April. And so I think that's going to be a huge problem. Intel warned on, Friday, uh, on Thursday, I believe it was. Yeah, it was on Thursday. And, and that warning, of course, took Intel lower. Intel's back at that $30 level. This is kind of the key level. I expect it's probably going to hold here initially. But it looks to me like it is going to come back and test that $29.65. And it's right here at that, that price point between 29.65 and 31 is kind of the key area. I think Intel is relegated to that area at best, near term, and then when the earnings actually do get here, this thing may fall back under here, and that may be a, may have been a false breakout on Intel to the upside. And so a retest regen off this prior high, 29.27, probably is going to be in the cards. That's the first one, you know, in terms of a major name coming out and saying, hey, we do have problems, and I suspect we're going to see others. Uh, you know, what do we watch for? I think the market is totally in no man's land. I, I don't think there's any high probability setups here right now uh, on either side. I think there's a lot of risk to the downside to go back to the bottoms of those ranges. I don't know that it's going to happen this week, but I suspect at some point we're probably going to go down there again. I don't think we're done. And I think if that's true, I suspect that what we're going to see is we're going to see um, some real fear come into this market if that happens again. And, and I would only go back one more time uh, to that S&P chart, you know, to kind of emphasize, you know, this, this is a huge problem, and, and I want to emphasize it across the multiple time frames. You know, this low, uh, 1988. This one, 1980. Okay, so remember those two numbers. Now we go here. 1988, 1980, that's these two. This one is at uh, 1972. So as you can see, if we come all the way back down here, we're threatening to break out on an intermediate term time frame. And if it takes another week, which I suspect it will, this one's going to print as a low too. So you're going to have two swing point lows lined up down here at the bottom, this one and this one, right, which would be breaks if they happen. This low down here, so in other words, you know, imagine, imagine a scenario where this Oops, got the wrong thing. Let's do it again. Um, imagine a scenario where this range now multiplies to the downside. In other words, we go to the downside about that same amount. What does that do? That brings you right into this swing point low, which will probably print by April now, will print as a swing point low on the long-term time frame. So then we have the potential, two swing point lows here, along with the long-term time frame, if we ever do break down here, folks, this is going to be an ugly turn. So, you know, and again, we're talking two, three months down the road at least, but it's something to keep in your mind. We are going to find a top in these markets at some time. We always have to be worried about where that might be because that's what you have to find a way to avoid. 20, 30, 40% drawdowns, you cannot be invested in, you know, certainly not invested on a full scale and so again we'll keep our eyes open and see how it works but you know the setup can slowly start to form here so we're in no man's land right now got that risk of ABCDs down if we undercut those lows from last Thursday and Friday and uh, I think the real key this week is going to be how the market reacts to the Fed you know it should be a buy the news event but I don't know if it can sustain those prices higher given all the choppy action it looks like is coming 
And so if that's true, and if I go back to that chart one more time, use the S&P, assuming we do, you know, let's just say that, well, let's take the, the best case for the market. Let's assume we're down here and get the bounce up. And maybe we get back up into that zone I've talked about as a, as a tough spot to get over. Assuming that happens, right, you still have the potential for some sort of an ABCD structure to get you lower. So I think we have to be very careful here about assuming this market's going to go higher. At, at the very worst, you know, it, at the very best, I should say, it needs to get over this 2076 area to give us some confidence that, it, that you know, it has a chance of getting higher. And we're trading at 20... 30 2053 so we got about 20 points to the upside uh, certainly doable but that to me is you know an area that we have to get over economics i already kind of alerted to it's really about the fed this week if we go to the bottom line here you know last week we were looking for some downside we got it this week is not nearly as clear though in my mind uh, you know i think we'll get some sort of an attempted bounce i just don't know that it's going to stick and if it doesn't, right, there's this risk of pushing back to the bottom of the range. Maybe not this week, but next. So I don't think there's a high probability trade here right now. And as a result, I think we just have to maintain kind of a very low profile and, uh, you know, observe this market as it goes and decide what to do. You know, last week, Monday, I believe it was, we, we shuffled off of almost all of our trades and took profits or stops Monday, Tuesday and got out. Uh, we missed a big downdraft, you know, we reserved our gains, we're up about 2 plus percent, I think, on, on average, uh, which is as good as, as the general market, uh, NASDAQ and Russell, and certainly better than the Dow and the S&P. Um, we don't have much inventory, and that's fine. I don't think we need a bunch of inventory right now. We're trying to play the bounce here with the QQQs. If we get it off the Fed, we'll try to book it. Asher, still looking pretty good. Um, I'm not going to go through most of these charts. Uh, I don't think there's a reason to. None of them are showing you that much. The only one that we added was eBay. Uh, let's, let's take a look at eBay together, though. And the reason to look at this is you, you got a, a breakout, right? On this time frame, we got a breakout back here. And then these two breakouts are weeklies, and we get over them, and now we fade back in. Not, not much volume. Still looks okay. The point of showing this, though, is that here's that breakout on this swing point high and the prior breakout here. And as a matter of fact, that top was 59.70. Yeah, so it broke both of them there. And then it goes over and comes immediately back. You broke out on the daily. You broke out on the weekly. You also broke out on the monthly, right? All of those have broken out, yet where are we? Or, or we, I should say we're breaking out on the monthly. Where are we? We're stuck, unable to push higher despite all those breakouts. You know, there's about a 20% probability of this happening. I, I didn't do the research to say, you know, does that 20% typically fail when the market doesn't support the move, which is what's happening right now? I suspect about 80% of those 20% that fell, you know, or, or come back immediately, or tied to that idea. And, and that, you know, the whole point of showing this is the reflection that, hey, if the general market doesn't go up, a lot of these things that should have prior probabilities are not going to continue to have those, you know, follow through probabilities. And we have to be aware of that. And so that's why it's so important always to be understanding where the general market is going. Because, you know, a rising tide lifts all ships and a sinking one, it brings them all right back in. So, you know, it's something to always uh, be aware of. Um, elsewhere, ZLTQ, you know, they had their earnings actually came back. Um, and, and they're setting up the range now. They came back. They tested into the support zone. Tested. I, I wanted to see them test into this bar, which is 29.82. Didn't quite get there. Got close. I wouldn't be surprised to see it come back down here and test this one more time. I think that's not a bad place to think about picking some up and taking a shot on it. Uh, it still looks great. Earnings were great. Uh, it's just that it ran so far. And so you've got everything happening positive here. 
And the other thing that was kind of a bummer on Friday is I took profits on NXPI thinking we would fail at this high. Well, we didn't fail. We actually jumped it and just kept going. So now I'll have to try to get back in again in that area. So we've got some good long-term winners. Uh, we don't want to dump those. Uh, but at the same time, I think on any kind of trades, we just got to be very careful here, be patient, and wait until this market gives us something better to work with. Uh, it's kind of a long show. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I will um, check with you all this week, and uh, we'll see where we go. Have a great one. Thanks. Take care.